Hey guys, Linode now has managed Kubernetes and they're keeping their usual simple pricing model. There's no management fees like AWS and other cloud providers. They even bundle transfer so you can significantly cut costs when compared to AWS, Google Cloud Platform, and Azure. With the amount you save, if you're doing any K8s, it really doesn't make sense to use anybody else but Linode. It's now even easier to connect to your Linode account. With one less login to remember, you can use your GitHub account. Give it a shot. The link is in the description tab of this video below, and if you use that link, you'll get a $20 credit. Hey guys, what's up? So this video is going to be about the number one reason why many are going to fail to become programmers. And it's not meant to be a negative video, but it's um, a video that I think needs to be made to kind of raise awareness, I, I believe, uh, to the number one reason why people are not going to become programmers, even if they feel like they want to be right now. So before I get into that one reason, I just want to explain some of uh, what I feel like I've seen over the last 10 years. It almost feels like over the last 10 years that we had this explosion of interest in tech because of really Mark Zuckerberg being the Harvard dropout, creating Facebook. And, you know, by 2008 or so, like Facebook was exploding in popularity and they were making a Hollywood movie about the story. And it really feels like from that moment on, there was like this huge explosion of, of wannabe programmers that wanted to become the next Mark Zuckerberg. But really, it wasn't Zuckerberg himself. And it really wasn't just the social networking Hollywood movie that caused this explosion. It turns out that we've had this fascination with computer science predating Mark Zuckerberg, probably dating back to Steve Jobs and Bill Gates. The difference now, it feels like, is that with the push towards everybody can code, it feels like the mindset now is that everybody can become the next Bill Gates or Steve Jobs. Whereas we used to look at that and be like, oh, well, I, I don't know computer science. I don't know ones and zeros and I'm not a math whiz, so I'm not going to be a programmer. So a lot of people simply didn't try for that career. It seems like over the last 10 years, we've had a lot of success stories from you know Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. A lot of these startups are founded by people that are very young and many of them are college dropouts. A lot of them also are not even programmers. We could talk all day about why these people are successful, who they knew to get their, their big break, uh, but that's not really important. What this is causing though is I feel like it's caused many, many more people to want to jump into this field for the one reason. And that one reason is money. Simply put, so many people are jumping into this field in this day and age because of the salary. And most of them are going to fail because that's the only reason why they want to be programmers. And look, I'm not trying to be all high and mighty. I don't blame you. I don't blame anybody that wants to do anything for money because money obviously makes the world go round. It's something that we all need. And regardless of how philosophical we get about it, uh, we still have to have it. So I understand all that. And um, and I think, you know, for myself that you know, money was a, a important factor for me learning how to code, but it wasn't the primary factor. I never wanted to have a programmer salary. I never thought I'd be a senior engineer or an engineer at all. I never thought... Um, I never thought any of that. Like I just simply was learning how to code as a means to an end to accomplish a business goal of building a website. And over the years, I learned that I really liked what I was doing and that I did want to do it full time. But it was not my primary motivating factor to spend the insane amount of time that it's going to take in order to become a programmer. This is a tough industry to be in. If you want to be a programmer, you're going to have to resign yourself to the fact that you're going to spend a lot of time staring at a computer screen. You're going to spend a lot of time pulling your hair out in frustration, trying to learn some new concept or trying to figure out why your code doesn't compile because you're missing a semicolon. That said, I don't mean to dissuade anybody. It's just that you should know what you're getting yourself involved in. You're getting yourself involved in a career that's not going to be the easiest thing to do. If it were easy, a lot more people would be doing it and that our, our salaries would be a lot less. The point I'm trying to drill home is that you need to become a programmer for the right reasons. You need to become a programmer because you enjoy doing the work, not for the free beer, not for the programmer society, not for the billions of dollars you expect to make. The bottom line is that the best programmers in the world, they weren't enticed into this field for the money, at least most of them. 
they're, they were the ones who were learning the program before they ever got paid. If they went to college at all, they were learning the code before they went to college and they decided that that's what they wanted to do. I think the real determining factor is if you really are fit for this field is do you enjoy writing code? Do you find that rewarding? Do you get some sort of like an endorphin release or is there, do you ever get excited to write code? Do you get excited when you solve those problems? Um, when I was learning, it took me three years to become an actual paid programmer, three years of self study all the time, thousands of hours every day. Um, I would though sometimes go to work and I would come, I would come home with a, a game plan. I would have like, I would be excited to go look at my code that I had been writing, you know, the previous night and I had all day to think about it and I couldn't even work on it. And I would go home and I would have like little goals for me and I would say, okay, I want to, uh, do this and this. But my goal wasn't, oh, I want to be a programmer. I want to be a paid programmer. My goal was programming goals. I wanted to come home and figure out why couldn't I make that database connection? Why can't I do my database migration? What the hell is even a database migration? Sometimes your goals are like learning something new. Sometimes it's like, why isn't this working? Sometimes it's debugging. Sometimes it might be just to watch some YouTube videos or read Stack Overflow comments. Whatever the goal is, though, it seems like too many people have the goal of, I just want to, how, how quickly can I be a programmer? How quickly can I make the money to be a programmer? And it's just the entirely wrong mindset. Some people are just naturally motivated by money. Some people think about money 24 hours a day. And I suppose you could use your love or motivation of money to become a programmer, but I don't think it's the ideal approach. So if that is your approach, I would at least do your due diligence to make sure you enjoy writing code before you try to go to a boot camp or get your college degree in computer science.